We recently shipped this website and a ton of people ask us how we built it. How did we make it so that you can have a website where any piece is drag and drop editable, where you have code generation with automatic grouping so that it can generate clean code regardless of the structure. And even if you register, the subsequent page also allows you to drag and drop and customize collaboratively and even an automatically updating OG image reflecting whatever edits you made in a PNG or SVG. Let's break it down step by step. First, the technology choice. We needed this website to be fast on mobile. So for this, we chose the Quick framework, but I will also show you how to do this in React because Quick looks very similar to React and we'll only need to change a couple things. So first, how do we do this animating, rotating dynamic backgrounds? Over in our code, we're using a root layout in Quick. So this wraps every page. We create an app state object using a deeply observable store. That's where we'll store reactive and type safe information that we'll use across the application. I have the schema for this in another file. Now what we're gonna do is create a visible task. This is like use effect in React, but with two differences. It can automatically observe things that change and rewrite accordingly, similar to other frameworks that use signals like SolidJS, and we can safely use set interval without any weird hacks. So we keep a list of frameworks and every two seconds, we're gonna find the next framework and we're just gonna update state.active framework. So this will either say React, or Quick, or Vue, et cetera. Now for the UI, I'm using Tailwind and we're using the really handy class prop in Quick. Class can take a string or an array or an object or any combination of those. So I have a few classes that are always applied to this layer and then I have certain classes applied conditionally. This base layer changes colors with an animation in between, and we have two images on top. Let's comment out these images and see what this looks like. Okay, so now we have this big, ugly, changing color. But we don't want just a solid color. We want it to look like a gradient. So we have a gradient image on top that is transparent in the center and then transitions to black in a radial gradient. So it looks like we have a colorful light at the top shining down. Lastly, we apply a grid pattern. This is an SVG and we use a background image to make it repeat. I'm using BG repeat in Tailwind. And now we get that cool checker pattern that looks a little bit like a grid used in design, but with all this changing colors. To transition the colors, I just use transition color and duration 700 in Tailwind. And then for other areas like our button, we can change the background text color or anything else to similarly match the current framework that's being displayed. So our button changes color alongside everything else. If we wanted to port this code to React, it's still just JSX. So all we'd need to do is use effect here and provide an empty dependency array. And then you'd likely want to store the active framework on some type of shared state. You might use Redux, Jotai, XState, MobX, whatever it is. Next, how did we do this fluid dragging and dropping where you can edit any element on any page and it even works on mobile when you touch and drag with your fingers. There's a couple important tricks here. The first one is we reactively track your cursor state at all times. These selection boxes render as overlays, fixed position on top of everything else. And on every mouse move or touch move, we track how far your cursor moved. Let me show you what this looks like. We put this all in a component called Artboard. And whether we do a mouse move or a touch move, we're tracking your current mouse position or current touch position as app state x and app state y. We're tracking the previous mouse position and that also gives us a delta. When you click or touch something, we check if there's a drag target, aka something we decided can be dragged. If so, we add that to our selection array, which we can select multiple things as well. And then we use a visible task where we track everything inside, meaning this is all reactive. If anything inside of this condition or anything used by this function change, this task will rerun. Our shift elements function takes our app state as an argument. It loops over the selection array. Because keep in mind, I can select multiple elements by holding shift and then dragging. So for each element, we're gonna get their transform and then update their transform using how far the mouse or touch has moved from the last state to the next state. So in most cases, this means move it on the X axis by the Delta, as well as the Y axis. To get the transforms, we're just parsing the CSS transform value. And to set the transforms, we're just updating the transform value. When you use Translate 3D, you get GPU acceleration. So dragging is silky smooth. 
And all we're doing is moving something from where it naturally renders to be offset by specific pixel value. Now with that code I showed you, I can move things around, but there's nothing showing me that this is movable. What we need is selection overlays. So with that code, we can drag and move things, but to feel like Figma, we need to show overlays. To do that, we're gonna abuse git bounding client rect. So we can query the DOM for the element that's selected. We can get its coordinates. We can render a box with fixed or absolute positioning, a blue border on the outside, and we just give the top left width and height the same as the client rect that we just calculated. Now we get an overlay over the top of each of these elements and we can drag them around fluidly. You may have seen in some of my code examples, this function get element by drag ID. The way we decide what elements are draggable is we just add this drag ID attribute. That way we can query the DOM, anything with a drag ID is draggable, we can give it a unique ID. It could be random or it could be nice and human readable. And that becomes the basis of when we click something with a drag ID, we can drag it. And that powers everything that you saw. Now, the next thing that happens is every time you make an edit, we actually update this code that describes what the layout is here. You'll notice that we use a nice animation here as well. We're using the auto animate library for this. Auto animate's incredibly simple. You give it a reference to a DOM element. In this case, this is a reference in quick just like use ref and react. And then any changes to the children inside are automatically animated, whether they move or in and out. So we produce this code and we run it through prettier to format nicely. And then we split it by new lines and make every single line its own div. And because quick like react will fall back to using VDOM for lists, automatically when we render each line, it'll move DOM nodes in the most optimal way using the key attribute so that we automatically get nice reformatting code like this. Now, when you register, we have the ability to drag and drop to customize our ticket. But most importantly, however I've customized the ticket, like adding my name here, we wanna make it so that when you share it to social, it renders to an OG image. So we need to render it to a PNG. To accomplish this, we make a new route in Quick. We fetch the ticket info from our database. And then we use a library called Satori that allows us to write JSX that renders to an SVG. So I have all of the logic here to render out that ticket per anybody's customizations. And then Satori will give us an SVG string. Now we have just one remaining issue. We need to provide a PNG, not an SVG. And to make things more difficult, I deployed my quick project to the edge. So I'm not using Node.js because I want the lightest, fastest possible runtime. And every SVG to PNG conversion library I've found has required Node.js. But I found something interesting. I found a WebAssembly implementation of converting SVGs to PNGs. So in this case, I'm importing WebAssembly. I'm using a special Vite loader for importing it as an array buffer. And then down below, I can actually execute that code, converting an SVG to PNG, passing the SVG string, a scaling factor, and I can return a PNG at the end. And now the last thing you're probably wondering, how does that code generation actually work? How is it that when I'm moving things around, we're restructuring the hierarchy with the correct flex classes, tailwind distances, gaps, et cetera, based on the position of all the elements on the screen? No matter how I rearrange them, this code should look shockingly close to what you would have written by hand. Well, I can't give that secret up just yet because that's what we're gonna be teaching at the event on October 12th. So if you haven't already, go to velocity.builder.io, claim your ticket, and we'd love to see you there show you I'll be launching, show you how the AI magic works, and a whole lot of other exciting announcements. Hope to see you there.